Went over the umbrella um, treatment. I re uh, sent you kind of the pre recorded version. If you don't find it, if you can't open it, let me know. It is a powerful reset. Um, it's it's not even just me. You have to understand that this stuff isn't just me. There is a world of people who do this stuff. And it may just seem like, oh yeah, that's that's kind of Susie's crazy shit path, kind of like ideas of what how your wellness goes. There's literally thousands of people around the world who do tens of thousands, who do melt, who do lymphatic release. If you look up lymphatics on the web, you will see it. it I don't even get listed. There are so many other people who do lymphatic work. So anyway, my point being in it is do it. Dive into it a little bit. Get to know and understand your lymph and get to know and understand the movement of your own fluid system so that your body actually recovers and restores and repairs itself more appropriately. Realize 100% that your body's gonna work as hard as it can to do what it needs to do every day. And it will do that. Literally, the body is designed is to keep you alive. And so it'll shut everything down almost to its own demise to keep you alive. It'll bring up as much pain as it needs to do to shut you down so it can stay alive. But realize there are so many things you can do to unlock, release, restore, reconnect the body so the body moves better, more practical, and allows itself to recover at a better rate. So really the idea isn't just to win. The idea is to move well and to live well. And so that when, if you do win this contest of living, that, um, that you, you'll probably be alone if you're the last one standing. And that's really not the point. The point isn't to be the last one standing. The point is to stand well amongst people who are also working to stand well. So anyway, we're gonna do a full body um, uh, melt, um, melt work today. So we're primarily gonna focus on melt. Um, if you need to use a wall to, to do um, reconnect, you'll reconnect on the wall. Um, if you can get on the ground, make sure you have a space to get on the ground for as well. We're gonna start also though with, as we typically do, a, or can do, a um, baseline move so that you can see where you're, in a sense, standing today. And very often we do the same baseline move over and over again, um, and maybe do a different one today. And give yourself the opportunity to move differently. Our body craves, our brain craves new neural pathways. So you can always do your typical reach down and touch your toes, it's convenient, it's present, it's right in front of you. It kind of tells you what your hamstrings, back and shoulders are doing. And then maybe pick another one so you can see something else. And if you even wanna get creative, that's fine as long as you can repeat it. So um, sometimes when we get creative, it's like, oh, I forget, did my right arm go first or my left arm go first? Or did I sashay to the right or sashay to the left or whatever? So don't get too creative, there's plenty of time for that. So anyways, go ahead and do a baseline move. Do something that you feel like you can repeat and notice, and then if you do want to do another one, just to kind of see where that is as well, and um, see how your movement is today. Remember, it's not just quantitative, it's qualitative. It's what you are seeing, feeling, doing, and then when we go into and understand and go back into our reflexive balance and our reflexive, we're reconnecting to our own system so that you can figure stuff out. So again, here's a forward fold. I will tell you right now, I'm quite sore. Yesterday I did an 11 mile hike, so this won't be that asyncratic after a while. You'll be like, wasn't that three years ago she did an 11 mile hike? But, um, but no, yesterday was an 11 mile hike. And here's the deal with 11 miles. You can walk 11 miles, any of, any of you can. I've seen you guys go to Europe. I've seen you guys go places. You're like, I walk 10 miles every single day. So it's like, all right. And then, but you come home and you walk two and then you're just like, I can't walk anymore. <laughs> and so, but everybody can walk 11 miles. Here's the other side of it. How can you recover from walking 11 miles? Does it take you 11 weeks to recover? Okay, does it take you 11 months? Do you never recover? And so giving yourself that opportunity to understand what you do, you should be able to recover from and recover well. Am I stiff, sore, and tired a little bit? Yes. Did I go to bed earlier than I normally do? Yes. Did I have a beer when I got home? Yes. And so, <laughs> you know, it's like that whole, hmm, I deserve that beer. That's right. And then I earned that beer. And so anyway, but enjoyed, enjoyed that all. I enjoyed the entire day. Let me say one beer, just one beer. Just it. That's it. And so um, anyway, so let's start with, so you've done your, uh, your baseline move. Let's start with a little bit of a nice, quick um, tribal five. So we're gonna do um, outside of your collarbone on your left side and pat five times. 
and then pull down three times and on your right side and again if you can touch skin to skin that's great because remember brain comes to the surface at the skin and so that means your brain is kind of going oh yeah let's do this let's kind of put the, put some energy into there and pack and pack five times and pull across three and then what's called your axillary it's called your axillary because you, you you're at your axillary um, axilla um, joints and upper body and rib cage just a little bit down into those ribs and then pat five times and pull up three times and then the other side and remember the benefit of this is partly you're connecting with you so that your body actually kind of releases and again, we're assisting. I mean, we pay for massages, we pay for you know, me meditation apps, we pay for all kinds of things that help us. Do things that help yourself in an efficient way. And then come up and over. And remember, just because you don't understand every single part of it doesn't mean it's not doesn't work. I promise you, I don't really know how a telephone works. But I still use one every single day. I still talk on it. I still believe it works when I'm talking to the person that I'm talking to. I still believe I'm talking to that person somehow. Whether we're in the matrix or not, it is what it is. And then pull up. So do the things that give you some connection. Sometimes we do things and we just keep doing them and don't exactly know why, but that's okay. You're not doing any harm to yourself, but you are at least touching yourself and Maybe nobody else is right now. <laughs> Five pats. And then pull up. Good. And then just bounce. A little bouncer, about 30 seconds. Hopefully you had a nice glass of water this morning before we started. If you don't, hopefully you have a glass of water or a glass of something with you. Another thing I forgot. Mm -hmm. on my phone. I have my water with me, my coffee. And then... <laughs> And then this bouncing just is kind of this, what's called turbitation to the system. It's pretty low impact. I mean, you can even make it less impact mm -hmm. and you don't even have to come out of your heels. But giving yourself that opportunity to just move, just kind of pumps everything up nicely. Inhale, take your arms up. Exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale down. Two more times up. And exhale down. One more time up and then down good all right go ahead and grab your large soft ball but get all of them with you so all four balls you're gonna need one of these two and a ruler So when melt was when Susan Hitzman kind of developed melt and realized ball work has been around for a long time. I've been doing ball work probably for 25 years in different capacities in different ways. So ball work isn't new and I'm sure people were doing something with a ball beforehand. It's hard to roll on a square. And so I'm sure balls came around pretty quickly into the whole scene of therapy like, oh, this rolls on me very easily. So, but the, t the cool thing about the melt melt system is that it doesn't just go in and come out or you don't have to grind the body to get the body to feel better and and then there with the small and the soft with the small and the large balls you do get more information I've tried and this sounds like a a uh, commercial I've tried other balls um, <laughs> and um, I've stuck with I've stuck with the two I know but anyway but, um, <laughs> But anyways, for about 27 years. I'm just saying, you gotta get the picture on that whole thing. Anyway, but um, I've tried other systems and other just ball techniques, and I'll say that they're good, but this actually helps you get, I, I feel the size, the tension of these, the movement of these helps better, helps and to kind of release and restore a little bit more efficiently. Now, I've been away and forgot my tools, and then I've had to go to the store and get something that's similar. And you know what? Turns out, get something that's similar. If you're out someplace, like you go to Oklahoma and realize you didn't put your stuff in your bag, you know, Oklahoma has stuff too, okay, or wherever. Um, and so 
don't, I would just say don't use a golf ball. Golf balls are for golf, okay? And so, because, and they're hard, and they're really big, actually, on the foot. So, try, try to find a small ball, something that you can do, something that's got a little bit of tension, but not too much, and just try to get in and get out really quick. All right, so, um, we'll start real quick with a, um, a reconnect sequence. Remember, this first part is to help you reconnect. It's not just standing here so I can talk more, but it's efficient for that too. It's, um, it's really designed so that you can settle in and reconnect to your system. And so you're not always playing the outside in game, but we're gonna go inside. So give yourself that permission to stop thinking, oh, it's always on the outside, what people think, what people do, how I hear. No, go on the inside and let's listen to what's going on on the inside. Take a deep breath, exhale. And first, just feel yourself standing in there. Just notice what's going on as you stand. Do you feel rigid, tight, sore all around? Do you feel like disconnected, like you haven't drawn inside? You've only allowed what's outside to affect you. I want you to let, let yourself know that your body actually can restore itself. This is not just me saying this. This is not just a book and a self-help. This is actually that you were designed for healing. You were designed for wellness. The body is nice and tall. Feel the feet on the ground. Notice how your footprint touches the floor. If you think that the floor is uneven where you're standing, take a full step to the right or to the left and see if you can find another place. More than likely, it's gonna travel with you. Notice the inside seam of the body. If that inside seam seems collapsed in any one spot, seems rotated or spun out, seems unevenly balanced, like one leg seems further back than the other leg, those are all signs of stuck stress and that the body's unable to reconnect and find its central kind of efficiency. Notice your quadriceps, your hamstrings, your glutes. If they feel tight and restricted, take a deep breath and see if you can release them. And even as you breathe, does it feel like when you breathe that you're just breathing up into your chest, maybe only down into your belly? Or when you take the breath, can you feel that press back of your body as your body's taking the breath in and moving the breath back out? Lift up all 10 toes and notice as you change that base of support that you have to a shorter base of support. Does it take more work, more challenge for your body to hold that? That's walking. Or do you feel pretty centered? Do you notice any pain? Because remember, pain is an indicator. Pain is a baseline. And then drop all 10 toes and notice, do you cave in? Do you swoop off to one side or the other? Or do you stand more central? Ideally, you're standing crown of the head over tailbone through the center of the feet. And then go ahead and open your eyes. So we're gonna start with the large soft ball. We're gonna go foot to foot. So we're going to do what we do with the soft ball first on the one foot, and then we're gonna switch to the other foot. So. If I've moved feet or I'm doing the same exact thing again, and you just said, I thought we just did that, and I thought we just did that on my right foot. Well, we're on your left foot now, okay? Or whatever foot you're starting on. So if you wanna start on your right foot, go ahead and start there. If you wanna start on your left foot, go ahead and start there. A reason to start on one foot over another is really that in piece, sometimes that side is giving you more information at that time, and you will tend to do more work on the first side that you pick just because it's the first side, kind of like the firstborn and blah, blah, blah. You put all this energy into that first kid and then all of a sudden you're just like, oh, I got two more kids are coming around pike and not, oh, well, well. <laughs> and if you're a third born or a second born, you know. <laughs> Turns out if you don't have kids, you were a kid and you have these experiences. Go ahead and press down nice and even. Take your arms up. Take your arms down, roll your shoulders and body down, roll yourself up, rotate to the right and left. All right, move the ball. Remember, the large soft ball is a tool to prep the tissue primarily, but then it can be its own sequencing of itself. Position point two, underneath the second toe, underneath the third toe, and fourth toe, and fifth touch. So those are all position point two. Position point three A is at the base of the arch, just where the arch kind of kind of intersects with the outside edge. Kind of if your arch was kind of like shaped like a treble clef, it's at the base of that. If you don't know what a treble clef is, look it up afterwards mm -hmm. and then come back up and then press down 
and then so your position point three B and then now position point four. You don't have to turn your foot like I just did. I'm just doing it so you can see. Always hide that ball. You do want to see this arch kind of move here a little bit. And then come up, move the ball to position point five, press down, and then come back up, take the weight back off, and then press back in and begin to do your glide. So the glide is this kind of two directional movement back and forth. And as you move the ball back and forth, you're also sliding your foot forward just to get the ball to move backwards. So you don't have to pick the ball up and move it. The ball is actually just kind of like you're spreading cheese, peanut butter, chocolate, or something. You just spread it down and then spread it back. If you pick up your foot and do it this way, it's going to be challenging. So you want to make sure that that heel is down. And we're coming back to position point five again. We're going to do complete pressure onto that foot. And then we're going to do um, a shear. And shear is a cross frictional movement. It's a tight wiggle, and you're just really trying to move the skin and the, sur and the superficial fascia layer of fascia. Compress, just like a sponge. Pause and release. Move the ball to position point two underneath the big toe knuckle, and then press to the heel. Notice I'm kind of walking forward, and the ball is actually shifting almost outside and behind my heel. So I'm almost just catching it with the back of my foot. Do about three more. You can go down the lines of the ligament lines of the um, the toe or the foot. So you all these ligaments that go down that pulling with this highway for hydration. Last one, and then friction. Friction is a multi-directional pattern. So it can be anything. It can be side to side. It can be back. If you want to go in circles, you're more than welcome to. The tissue of the body moves in all directions. It's three-dimensional, so it can pull up. It can press out, it can pinch in, it can move diagonal, so it can tolerate and handle just about any movement. And then pause. Go ahead and bring those feet to parallel just for a moment. Just notice the balance of the right and left side. Don't make too many observations because we're moving on. Second foot, same thing. So if you know the song Fried Ham, this is basically fried ham. Same as the first, a little bit louder, a little bit worse kind of a thing. So we're just going on. Again, if you don't know fried ham, look it up. Back and forth. I was raised on TV and on um, camp songs. So just you know. <laughs> And a lot of cereal, lots and lots of cereal. <laughs> Mostly like boring cereal, because we were that family, that no one really wanted to come over, because we didn't have the good food. <laughs> we didn't have Kool-Aid. We didn't have, we had butter. Um, we didn't have margarine, we didn't have Wonder Bread or whatever bread. And then pause, take your arms up, take your arms down, roll forward and roll yourself back up. Roll to the right, roll to the left. Take your foot back, move the ball to position point two, press down. Position point two under the second toe. And then my parents went into like buckwheat pancake, you know, mode. And they went into, they did everything. My mom did every diet, all of them. And then back to position point three A, Beverly Hills diet. I don't yeah. know if you heard of that one. That was you basically only ate fruit for 30 days. Yeah, that's a smart idea. Mm. And then yeah, to the outside edge, which if you're a bird, you know, kind of a thing in the in, you know, down the Amazon, maybe good idea. And then, or if you're a monkey and want to eat that many bananas, but it was a lot of watermelon, just tons and tons of watermelon. Position point five. Pause, press down. Bring that weight back up, press down again to a tolerable pressure, and begin that gliding. Buckwheat pancakes. I probably was the first kid that I know of who actually had to stir their peanut butter, but then peanut butter became bad too, so we didn't eat peanut butter anymore. <laughs> but I will tell you this, this is the oxymoron of my entire family. We ate copious amounts of, of ice cream. Absolute body weight poundage of ice cream, very high quality ice cream but absolute uh, enormous amounts of ice cream went through my house and popcorn. So, you know, then you can see why my di digestive tract and why I needed to get back on the plan. <laughs> my mom felt that the eating of popcorn was helping her because it was, it's, because popcorn basically is fiber. You're basically eating fiber and you know, she needed fiber help. So anyway, so she saw it as kind of a health food to help her, you know, do what she needed to do. So shearing, pause, Release that tension and then glide, or sorry, rinse. 
It's a gliding motion, so I kind of say that sometimes. So rinse through, rinse through, rinse. One more time, rinse through and then friction. So once again, if you didn't move over to the second foot, you just catch up on the bus that comes next because we're moving on after this. Because we're gonna do this kind of again with the large firm ball. Good, go ahead and pause, put that ball off. Just again, recenter, recheck in. Not to do much, just <coughs> notice what's going on inside your body. <coughs> Good, go ahead and open your eyes. All right, so you have those two smaller balls, okay? For the most part, we don't use them because they're really for the foot only used for one thing, position point pressing, okay? Or if you had a very small person, you might be able to use them for that. Or if you were doing this on somebody else, which most people won't, so don't really like severe feet that much. So put them both down there because you're gonna figure out which ball you can use. So we're gonna start with the large, I'm sorry, the small soft ball, and you're gonna place that underneath at position point one. So put that underneath at position point one, press down gently, and then, and then line up those feet. And notice if you can tolerate it. If it's just there, so remember, it's position point one in the center of the foot. So it's not to the arch, it's not to the outside edge, it's not really forward, it's not really back, it's right in the center. Notice if you can tolerate it, pause. Take a big deep breath. If you can tolerate it, great. Okay, we're gonna do that on the second side real quick because we're gonna just test both sides. So then now you're gonna know. So you're gonna put it on the second side. Try to get it right in the center of the foot. It may give you more information on this side, but it notice if it's tolerable. So it is okay, hear me now, hear this right now, that you do the small soft on one side and the, and the, and the small firm on the other side. Because I know that could be a complete game changer for you that you could do different, but allow yourself to be able to do what your body needs to be able to tolerate at that time, okay? So if you know that, let's move on to the second ball, which is the small firm ball. If you don't have a small firm ball, you don't have all four balls, then that's problematic. So you now you'll know that you'll just use the small soft, or if you don't even have the small soft, you can go back in and use the large soft right now. So you're just going back and forth. If this makes your face pucker, yes. if this makes your eyes glint and a tear drop down the outside, it's probably not tolerable, okay? If it's tolerable and it just feels like, oh yeah, there's just kind of like a pressure there, that's fine. It's tolerable to you, okay? If it's not tolerable to you, it's not tolerable to you, okay? Let's go to the other foot. So my tolerable is not your tolerable, okay? It doesn't matter if it's tolerable to Marina or to Patty or to anybody. You wanna make sure that it's just tolerable to you. Again, if you rock back and forth and you instantaneously know it's not tolerable, you can pause and you can see if it gets more tolerable, probably doesn't, then kick it out from underneath you. So I am going to use the large or small firm on my right foot and I'm going to use the small soft on my left foot. Does that make sense? Yes. yes. Okay, if it doesn't, do what you need to do and use the same one on both feet, okay? It's okay. On top of this, this is one time you're going to be doing this, yeah. okay? Tomorrow, you can do it differently, <laughs> okay? So, I've got the small firm ball underneath the center of my right foot. Remember, we're gonna do right then left immediately, okay? So, and if you wanna do left then right, I don't care either. Okay. Just know what you're doing mm -hmm. and do the thing that you're doing. Okay, just know that we're just shifting feet. All right, so press down. Again, take your arms up. Take your arms down. Roll the shoulders forward and roll the shoulders back. Realize, guys, this is a really long treatment that we're doing today. Go ahead and put the big toe down. And I only do like a full treatment, like maybe once a week or less, and press down. I usually do what, what would be called a mini, a mini softball treatment, or I do a different form of treatment. But I'm doing them a lot because of teaching and then press down. So sometimes I do multiple treatments in a day in small parts. So position point through four, I'm sorry, two against the fourth toe and then against the fifth toe. You can really see how it can press up the knuckles and open up that space very differently. Move the ball down to position point three A, press down. That could be a lot of information. And then come back up. And remember, we're getting in, getting out. We're not spending time there. You know, like people are like, oh, I'm gonna just get that skull ball. I'm just gonna jam it into my whatever. I'm like, huh, oh, don't do that. Okay. Push down on position point four, press down. Now, again, as you do more, you'll learn more, you'll feel more, you'll get a little bit better at it. You'll find those spaces that 
work a little bit better, maybe it's a half inch forward or half inch back. Position point five, press down, and then come back up. And that is all you do with that ball. Now I'm going to the small softball for my left foot. You do you, okay? And we're gonna go back and forth again, just a little information. Pause, take those arms up, take those arms down, roll forward and roll back. Good, take the ball to position point two behind the knuckle of the, of the first toe, behind the knuckle of the second toe, behind the knuckle of the third toe, fourth toe, and fifth toe. And realizing this is taking a good amount of time, partly because I'm talking through it, okay? And then we're now at 3A, move the ball to 3B. But when you do it, it won't take 45 minutes to do. It's gonna take you maybe 15 minutes tops, okay? But you've probably got 15 minutes on some Thursday night while you're watching, you know, the wheel or something like that. And, um, or, you know, Jeopardy is on. And you're like, you know what? I don't know the any answers, but I do know how to melt my feet right now. So I'll just watch and enjoy the show this time and then position point five, and then come out, okay? Then we're gonna rinse real quick, take that large softball, we're gonna rinse, put that ball in there, rinse that first foot, you can rinse the second foot first, the first foot second, doesn't matter, just rinse, 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 one more time, rinse and friction, just give it a little bit of a shake, and then pause, and then go to the other side, rinse, 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 rinse. Give it a little bit of a shake and then pause. Good, bring those feet back together. Just bring your head and chest up and then notice. Just notice what's going on. Your body's probably starting to feel a little bit more like settled in the footprint, maybe a little bit more even through the space in the midline. As you take that breath, it may feel more centered. As you take it down, like you can feel the movement it might feel like tingling to you. It may feel like pressure and release to you. It may just not, you may not notice what's going on. It's okay. Go ahead and grab that large firm ball. Okay, one more. All right, so we're gonna do a performance end of this treatment, which is like we're not going to do position point pressing with this. So with the first foot pressed down, just try to find tolerable pressure. Notice my heel is on the ground to begin with and I'm just pressing in. Again, it's right in the center of my foot. My foot is caving over the ball. If I wanted to, I could go side to side. I can tolerate it, it's fine with me. It doesn't bother my foot to go evenly and shift side to side. Go ahead and pause. Take your arms up over your head. Take your arms down, roll your shoulders forward and roll your shoulders back. Take your foot back, move the ball to position point five. Put a little bit more pressure on it, not a lot. Remember the ball's doing the work and begin to move the ball back and forth. The other reason why the golf ball is not a good idea is it's too slick. And so, kind of slick. And then, but it just swoop, 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 swoop. It comes out from underneath you too easily. So you tend to have to put more pressure onto it to keep it in place. More pressure than you need to. Notice that foot as we're going back and forth. You may notice some spaces, some pockets, some pieces that are a little bit disruptive in there. Those are barriers or, or chunks of, of tissue that feel a little bit more compressed than others. I want you to butt up. So if this is a little area, and the heel of your foot like that's tender, you're gonna take that ball and you're gonna put it right up against it. And then you're gonna do that shear. So I don't have that ball at position point five. I have that ball on the inside of my heel, right there. Now remember the heel is all about the organs. So you've got your GI tract and you've got your spleen and you've got a bunch of different things, but it's a lower organs is your, um, digestive organs is your heel. Pause. And then let's rinse. Remember not to stop on the ball at the heel. So as I rinse, I actually roll off the ball. Rinse down so the ball goes off so I'm not stopping on my heel. If you have socks on while you're doing this, this is more tricky. And I know your feet are cold if you have socks on, but it's better to have skin to equipment to out of touch. One more time, and then friction. So performance treatment tends to be pretty quick. You get in, you get out. Go ahead and pause. That was the first foot. Shoulders up around and back. Good, notice that first side. Notice it might even feel much more solid, connected, focused, maybe even more space away from the second leg. That's kind of referring to how I'm feeling with it. Go ahead and to um, put the ball under the second foot. Just press back and forth. See if you can tolerate that. If you can tolerate that, bring the feet side to side 
and ship in and out. I can tolerate that. You may not be able to tolerate that. Also notice when you press down, does your body give you any information even above the waist? Do you feel any kind of boo, kind of like nerve boop? Or do you feel any kind of like, kind of like sense to take a big deep breath in, not because of pain, but because your body's asking for more movement on the inside. Go ahead and pause, take your arms up, take your arms down, <clears throat> roll down and roll up. Notice what we are doing also as tons of mobility work throughout the entire range of the body. Okay, it's not, spe it's not specific like walking or lifting, but it's movement to get your body to take up hydration more efficiently. Go ahead and bring that ball to the position point five, and let's move that ball back and forth. Again, remember, it's pressure and consistency is the kind of the key with the ball, especially with gliding. You're not trying to go, oh, you know, oh, I'm gonna put all the pressure down on the first part, and I'm gonna lean back and take the pressure away on the second part. You wanna try to keep as consistent a pressure as you can and start noticing go slower maybe in certain areas. Just like when you get a massage, they don't just kind of rub your back. They go slower in areas. And then they start noticing things and patterns and pressure. And then they kind of focus in on areas. So remember, this is a hands-off body technique. This one, I'm going on the inside upper part of my heel. I'm butting up against a barrier. And I'm gonna go with my whoo, that's whoo. <laughs> My whole little ear, oh, ear. <laughs> but I'm good, it's all tolerable, right? Yeah. And then go ahead and pause. Let's rinse, big toe to heel, second toe to heel, third toe to heel, fourth toe to heel, and fifth toe to heel, and friction. Good, and then go ahead and pause. Bring those feet back to parallel. Bring your shoulders up, around, and back. Take a nice deep breath. <sighs> Take your notice from your heels, your feet, your inner thighs, your quadriceps, glutes, and hamstrings. You should just feel settled in the body. The body should feel like it's getting more so. Each side of the body, lower part of the body, is doing its thing without feeling like it's competing or doing less than the other side. Notice the space in between the thighs, if it feels about the same, kind of not one knee dropping in or one knee pressing back. Notice if you can really feel the feet. I mean, you really should. You put a lot of intention into those feet. Take, lift up all 10 toes. You may shift back slightly, but it shouldn't take you a while to figure out where your center of mass is. And then drop all 10 toes. And notice if you just kind of hang out. And not because you're gripping to hold yourself, but because the body's just settled. And then go ahead and open your eyes. Recheck your baseline. Good. Nice, 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 nice. Good. I can touch the ground. I can touch the ground. And then roll yourself up. <laughs> nice squat, nice touch the ground. So realize, remember all those hamstring stretches we just finished doing, that hour of hamstring curls, that hour of releasing the lower back, all that extra stretching that you just did, you didn't do, right? There was no stretching. We didn't stretch one hamstring. We didn't stretch your quads. We didn't take a run around the block. No, all you did is move hydration. All you did was move fluid flow. And so when the body is appropriately ready and calm, the body will move like it should move. When the body's not calm, the body's gonna stay in tension. When the body stays in tension too long, it gets used to that tension, and then it begins, that's the new normal. Mm -hmm. And then it slowly, 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 all of us in the new normal is way up here in this tension. Well, you don't notice that tension anymore, because that's where you live, and you're somehow living, because remember the brain wants to keep you well all the time. Then you just have to slowly unearth it, and then you're gonna come up to this nub over here, and this nub over here, and then you're gonna find this thing over here, and archive this little crap piece right over here. And then slowly, it's, to get back to what was your old normal is unearthing all of this junk that got settled into place. So give yourself the opportunity, and I know this seems like forever, to do a treatment that took this long, but in this long, how quickly did you get to a place where your body just said, we're good to go, okay? And really this long wasn't this long, and the time of this long of how long you guys sit for work, or how long you stand in one place for work and do this, or do this, head down, or 
do this. Oh, I can't believe people are doing that. <laughs> there were. Whatever's going on, allow yourself to be present in your own thing. So we're going to do a really quick kind of an upper body treatment. Go ahead and either sit, stand, kneel, lie, get on the ground, whatever you want to do. Grab your large soft, grab your four balls. Now again, the small balls are for position point pressing. If you want to sit in a chair, grab a chair. If you want to sit on the ground, that's fine. Sit up on a BOSU, on a block, on a thing, whatever you need to do. So again, we're going to start with our, our forearms coming together. Bring your hands out in front, take a nice deep breath, inhale and exhale. Now very typically to try to keep the elbows together, if you have lack of, de lack of hydration, the elbows will be pulling apart from each other. You'll feel like it takes work to a certain degree to keep the elbows together. Go ahead and open your eyes, open your hands. So if someone has asked me before, should you be able to get your hands out? Yeah, absolutely yes, this is not a fantasy. You should be able to have flat hands, like you're holding a pizza. Okay, but most people have this kind of goblet thing, one finger is doing one thing, one thumb is doing another thing, because of time, pressure, and energy put into the hands, shoulders, neck, and so on. Go ahead and relax your hands, grab that large softball and just make a fist, and you're doing a grounding technique of just creating tension and pressure and release. And you can even feel the muscles <coughs> around the forearm, maybe even into the shoulder. Contract a little bit and release. Take it to the second hand, do the same thing on that hand. Press in and release, press in and release, and then alternate the hands. Eyes open or eyes closed just to notice what's going on. Good, go ahead and keep that large soft ball in your hand and you're gonna place that ball. So I'm placing the ball against the pad of my hand and my first finger. And I'm just pressing with my tip of my finger and then the pad of my finger. Point and press, point and press, point and press. And I can feel the tension in my thumb and around this whole side. It's like a lot of tension. Maybe it's from texting. Maybe it's from a lot of other time and place and energy and stuck stress. Good. Go to the next finger. Point and press, point and press, point and press. I'll acknowledge what's mine. You know, what I've done to kind of create dis disconnect in my own body. And then I do know the other things I've had that I've actually put into my body that have actually created disconnect. They basically, when I had cancer, they basically said, you'll probably lose, it's possible that you'll lose the use of your thumbs because of the type of treatment that you have. And I took that on. Um, that, was, that was a risk I was willing to take. And it's basically my thumbs are not useless, but they're very difficult to use because of um, the treatment that I had. So I really weigh that kind of stuff very specifically because I know what they say. It's like, if they say it, it'll probably do it to a certain degree and you'll have to live with the consequences of those things. So for me on that one, taking that medication when my children were one, three, and five was more important than, than not. Two, and last one. Good, take that large soft, I'm sorry, small soft ball. You're gonna place it between the fingers as low as you possibly can, and you're gonna squeeze that ball. Now you can do this with the, the, the large soft ball, but it's nicer in a sense to do it with this ball. Just gets into those little creaks and crevices real nice and easy. I've even seen people do it on their toes where they push it in their toes and they squeeze their toes. So if you've got enough space between your toes and you can do this, I do, you can do it between your toes as well and it kind of opens up that space along that nerve line. Real important, those spaces between the, nerve, between the knuckles, they actually act as information. It's like the little, all the body is made of these weird tentacles all over the place. And then squeeze. In your lungs, there's these, the little pods in your lungs, they're just little <laughs> tentacles to bring in information. In your gut, there's all this villi, there's all these, basically it's an entire grass field in there that should be kind of moving back and forth. And they just get stuck and gross and tired and inflamed and that kind of thing, in your neck and your throat. It's all these little tiny little pieces all over the body. And it brings in information. Well, just like your fingers bring in information. You want to be able to use them as much as you can. Second side, we're going to point and press with the fingers. Point and press, point and press, point and press. Second finger. Also, this is great if you want to play flamenco guitar. If you're really good at that, you can really use that fingering on that flamenco guitar. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can look it up. <laughs> You need a t-shirt that says that. If you don't know what I'm talking about, <laughs> <I'm totally laughs> <up. laughs> That's great. I like that. <laughs> I'm going to say a lot of things to 
that you may not know what I'm talking about. You were obviously not raised on cereal and cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> I learned a lot from what I watched. Mm. <laughs> All right, again with the second hand. Good. Squeeze that ball nice and tight. Squeeze that ball nice and tight. Make sure you have a nice good grip around it. You could do one, two, three times as a squeeze. <laughs> Julie Brucker, a gal who's been with me a long time, she kind of rolls her eyes now and says, just shit Susie says. <laughs> And after you have to look it up to see if it's real, actually, too. It makes you actually look it up, if nothing else. <laughs> now, some things don't look up, because you don't really want to go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> All right, grab your large, um, your large softball. You're going to place it between your thumb pads of your thumbs, and you're going to gently begin to move that ball back and forth. If you can, just keep your fingers kind of interlaced and move that ball continuing to add a little bit more pressure as you do and so you can get used to it. Notice how my knuckles are pointed kind of down so then that way I can kind of catch the ball. If my hands are pointed forward, it's a little bit more challenging, plus the ball just drops right out of my hands every now and again. This is a technique that you can do like when you're when you're the passenger in a car or on a plane or on a train or maybe in a carriage or maybe sitting on the TV watching and eating ice cream and uh, maybe cereal and a uh, cartoon. So, most of the things I learned, I learned from Bugs Bunny. So uh, don't get in an argument with me because you'll get the one with a sh with the shotgun in the face. <laughs> <laughs> I'll figure that one out. And if you don't know what that means, <laughs> look it up. <laughs> Good, go ahead and pause right at the pad of your hands. The one nice thing about the people on Zoom I, I don't know if they've turned me off or not. <laughs> <laughs> They're just my captive audience. <laughs> They're probably eating ice cream right now and having cereal. <laughs> just watching the show kind of degrade into something. Up and down, back and forth. And then pause. Good. And then you're going to rinse knuckle to nail. And then second hand knuckle to nail. and then friction now grab both balls both large at both large firm and large soft if you have two large soft you could do it with two large soft you're gonna do both hands at the same time partly it's efficient and then partly it's kind of fun good switch the ball so you have the firm ball in the other hand the soft ball in the other hand too and again one hand's gonna be like I can do this all day long the other hands be like I don't know what I'm doing but I'm just kind of following the first hand Good, and then go ahead and pause. Take the large softball back in your hand, make a little fist around it, see if that fist just feels different, better, more clear about how it makes the fist. Maybe there's less tension and pressure down the forearm. Take the ball into the second hand, do the same thing. And release. Go ahead and put the ball down, bring your forearms together. Elbows feel like they can come together a little bit easier, a little bit of fluid return coming down. Remember, it's not just that it goes down, it's that it comes back up and you can get trapped into the elbows. Taking that deep breath, exhale, open the palms out, feel like you can get a little bit more length, a little bit more stretch, a little bit more openness, close the palms in and relax. Well guys, we're done with our day today. So fantastic, a full body treatment. We're gonna stand up and we're gonna do a baseline again as you can. Recheck your baseline, just notice as you go down and touch the ground, much better for me, like significantly better and then roll yourself back up and just give yourself the opportunity to be thankful, grateful, and appreciative of what you have right now and what you have control of. And right, really, that's you. You have as much control over you as you want to give yourself control and you can find more balance, more connection, more availability in that body. So have a great day, guys. I will see you guys on Wednesday. Um, if not before, let me know if you have any questions. Give me a call, text me, email me, whatever you'd like to do. If you have questions on that full umbrella reset. Um, also, if you also notice, I sent you a picture of all those things that, that clock, remember that mm -hmm. clock set up? Yeah. Those are old. They're directly connected to organs. Remember, those hands, directly connected to organs. The feet, directly connected to organs. Right around the navel, all of those ligaments, directly connected to organs. Our body is made brilliantly, not with, and so it has redundant ways to get to the system so the body can function. 
So your number one movement that you always have with you until the last time you do it is your breath. Okay. The second movement that you have is your movement, whatever movement that means movement of your hand, movement of your head, movement of your body. So whether that movement travels you or keeps you in connection in one spot, fine, just do it.